potential? Like 2016. Yeah, so we ordered the next tranche of 2,000 LEDs. So 50% energy savings with each lamp installed. And then there's a savings on maintenance costs. So it's, it's about double the life of the low pressure sodium. So we know we're going to save um, out of the 2 million we spend on energy costs per year for our lamps. We know we're going to save 1 million when they're all installed within two years. So we're going to use that money hopefully to do replacements and then we don't know how to step into the area lamps, which are about 90% of the light on the island, but we're going to maybe work on a program with you guys yeah. to see if we could um, get a real incentive going for area lamps. Because we'll, we'll be the first county to do a full LED install on street lamps. What is the area lamp? Like, parking lots? And anywhere. Okay. Yeah, anywhere else. So there's, there's 10,000 street lamps around the island. There's about 90,000 area lamps. So, so maybe the strategy, and, and whoever's very strategic here could help me out, maybe the strategy is to hit the resorts first. Yeah. The resorts that, you know. Some places, like the airport has done, the parking lot lights they've redone. They did them wrong. And they, they did them with fluorescent. And, and no, no, they're LED. I inspected them. The ones underneath the PD? No, no, they're, they're parking lot lights. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're the ones they, parking lot lights they redid. I haven't seen them at night yet. But they, they just did a big PV project of one megawatt, uh -huh. and they put um, fluorescents. So, they so sorry, yeah. No, they've probably, redone all of their lighting under their, like, the, the loading areas where they do all their baggage. Yeah, Johnson those are, Control. Those are all LED. Right. I'm still waiting for them to give me accounts so I can actually process them. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, we don't, um, we've looked at what Johnson Controls is doing at the airport here, and we don't, um, we don't meet eye to eye on it. Yeah. We, we think they're using an inferior. Well, we've been having a nightmare just getting the information so we can cut them a rebate. I mean, they've been done since January. I haven't seen a lighting count. I was like, can you just give me a lighting count? Yeah. So that's since January. Yeah. I can't get a lighting count. So. Um, if you need, help, if you need help with front. that, um, Chauncey, Chauncey and uh, County, Chauncey Wong, who's the uh, DOT Airports for this island, um, works with County. Pretty closely, so, okay. so we can oh, get that up. I mean, I have their project managers. He's sent us numerous emails saying, "Yeah, we'll get it to you by the end of the week." But that's pretty much every time we talk to us. We from, can, from JCI. Yeah. If we include Chance, so we can get it done right away. Okay. So yeah, go ahead, sir. You said the county pays two million a year mm -hmm. for ten thousand students. That's correct. So for the remaining lights, is that eighteen million? Uh, we don't. County doesn't own the, the area lamps. Um, this county is actually unique in that we own our street lamps. The county of Maui, the utility owns their street lamps. So something happened, maybe Tommy knows, but something happened in the 80s where they they gave county the street lamps. And I'm, I've always wondered why that happened, but I'm glad they did because we have control over what technology goes in there. The area lamps are just parking lot lamps, any light, anything, exterior lighting. Right. But so strategically, if we hit the resorts first, yeah, maybe that's the, the right way to do it. Well, we'll, we'll get up. Maybe we can have a site uh, meeting about that. Okay. Yeah. How wide you can yeah. Push that for. I know we're waiting for the, the 10,000 LEDs. I met with Ron when I first started and he was kind of trying to figure out how they could actually get, get more funding going their way so they could get it done faster. I know that. It's yeah. Just, just well, we'll have 2,000 more in by um, by about July. Okay. And then, uh, so you should be able to rebate him on those. So yeah, we're, we're processing some of them right now. Good. good. Installed 100 in the, on the E Heights area in Kona. Yeah. And uh, we're just waiting for the correct invoices. Yeah. What's interesting is the technology is moving so fast. So, so a 55 watt low pressure sodium we're replacing with a 25 watt right. LED, and then soon we'll be able to get the same light out of a 15. Right. That's how fast it's moving. Oh, yeah. So, um, how many total do you have there? 10,000 street lamps okay. on the island. 2, in Hawaii. We have 1,200 already oh. installed, and we, in six months we should have uh, 2,000, maybe blowing up to 3,000. So the, Yes, the, the 200, there was a 1,000 prior to the beginning of the Yeah, we used so. uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment. So now there's been 200, 200 gone in since January about, right? That's right. That's correct. So then, yeah. They're all going to be the single wavelength. They're all yeah. going to be, um, 
we made a negotiation with astronomy that they would be warmer. Um, cooler lights are more efficient, but they like warmer lights so they can filter out the, you know, the great thing about low pressure sodium was they could filter out just the right. sodium. Um, but it turns out that um, they could also filter out other wavelengths. So, so we're making a little warmer than okay. we like, but that was the negotiation because if astronomy didn't agree with us, we couldn't do it. So we just closed <coughs> that deal for an island-wide ordinance. Because I know it kills down the hotels and the resorts. Yeah. The single the single wavelength, a lot of the restaurants and stuff. Yeah. Things like presentation, if you've ever seen how that light reflects off it, it's horrible. It is. And it's, I mean, and all the food's gray and everything. It's oh, like, that's, yeah. Yeah, I've had a couple of the... Yeah. For exterior lighting? Oh, You're like the Lua. No, 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 no. It's actually, you know, the like the king shops? Uh -huh. Some of the external seating was under low-pressure sodium lights. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it was it's terrible. It's terrible. The steak right? looks like... Uh, Everything's gray and nasty. And, yeah. Well, this steak doesn't look so good, so <laughs> actually... <laughs> we kind of improve it, right? <laughs> well, then you just turn the lights down. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, but um, that it, it is, because you just mentioned mm -hmm. resorts and stuff, that's an issue. No, and it's actually a safety, there's, so the, there's other ancillary benefits we, we don't talk about a lot, but the police are able to distinguish, you know, crime scenes, blood versus gravy, and also it distinguishes itself from the caution lights. So when you come yeah. over a hill and see a low pressure sodium, it kind of looks like a caution light, so you're freaking out. So now the new lights will they are more green. They're more of a, a you can differentiate. Yeah. Them. Actually, I hate to tell you, it's one thing worse than that. If you ever pull for a look at night, the yellow matches, and so you don't see the caution light well, until that the lights suddenly turn red. That happens here in Vigo all the time when it's raining at yeah. night. You can't tell this, the yellow light no. from the... I, I have colored lights, but I really can't tell. I always have to like look at the lights. Right. <laughs> really cautiously. So we're trying to get away from that. Sorry, I was just curious. Will, are you, are you interested in sending me the whatever you're going to present so that can be routed? Yeah, I did send it uh, <coughs> prior to our last scheduled meeting, so it could be routed, but I'll send it again. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thanks for sending Jill that. No worries. Did you find anything? Um, yeah, she's going to try to see.
couple times. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. Do you have mine probably? No. Did you see my correct? I forgot. I'll take it. What is the Yeah, we can please talk about it. Well. It's like sisters. I have one of these different names on them. Right. I know. That's fine. I don't know anybody. So I don't have any information. Okay. There is somebody coming to us. We were talking about doing another water. I love it. It was like actually somebody might be able to come and do some water for an hour. Okay. One thing I was going to tell you if you're advertising here, one of the things is if you do like a uh, monthly award, and a short award, uh, the company that has the highest percentage of uh, no, no, rebates, they do something like that. Because I these big, like whenever we do a big rebate for an organization, that do a big. The big check money, you know, sorry, so it's in the newspaper showing like 75,000 or 100,000. What I'm saying though is you just say the percentage of it right. they've done. Because then they'll see that they can compete with them. Sorry, see, we took a quick break. <laughs> because uh, no, you were just in some the next piece of money. Oh, thank thing, you. So. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Chance on that. So we're moving on to item number seven, I'll discussing the recommendation for the county to develop. PSAs um, for promotion of Hawaii energy programs. So, you know, I'll start with a discussion on that. Well, something we brought up at the last meeting <clears throat> as a relatively simple thing came up in the context of um, Grayson's talk about um, <clears throat> Hawaii energy could use some assistance in connecting with certain of the residents of the island and getting information out there, especially the residential sector. Um, and so it seemed as though it was um, <clears throat> relatively easy for us or the county to come up with some educational PSAs that would get people to either connect or call or learn something in the message that might help them and uh, could be done free and, and quickly. So that was the context of this um, suggestion. And I guess there's different ways it could be pursued. I see the way it's here, um, written here, is that we would make a recommendation to the mayor. I think alternatively, we could also just come up with some PSAs um, pretty easily. And even maybe with the collective wisdom and input of everyone here, we could do that you know, without a lot of challenge or effort or time involved. And then just have the county you know, revise them appropriately. And if I think if, if that were the case, I know Hawaii Energy has a full marketing team that puts together press releases and everything like that. They could give a big rough draft of, a, of an overview of different PSA potentials, and then you guys could review them and say these are the ones that I think would have the best traction here. <clears throat> so you have written PSAs already? They do PSAs for all of our programs. Um, mm -hmm. So they just did a new like uh, restaurants program to try to capture more stuff for restaurants. And, uh, what have they done here for the residential sector? Well, the residential program, you mean, as far as on the Big Island? To serve our residents. Right. So most of the residential program, because it's, you're dealing with lots of little projects, are captured at the box stores, right? Like you go to, And this is one of the irritating things, actually. I think Tommy pointed it out. Well, why would you go to Home Depot? Isn't there a sticker there that says, Hawaii Energy is offset the cost of these LEDs? Why are the LEDs $6, right? They should be 20 why are they six? Well, Hawaii Energy is paying at the dock stores to offset the cost for residences. Same with like uh, refrigerators. There's like a trade-in program and an AC program. But the box stores haven't been putting up any of our logos, our decals. And they actually, on Oahu, I, I heard a few of the Hawaii Energy people actually were going in guerrilla style and sticking up their own emblems on their displays because Home Depot says they change their displays so often or whatever, they, they can't keep up on it. But Ace is now on board with Hawaii Energy. Uh, Costco's on board with Hawaii Energy, Home Depot and Lowe's, all those, they're not doing their, their end of it to, to promote. I don't understand that. I, I think I'd get back. I'm going to find out if there's any way that I can do it here. I, send me some stickers. I'll go, you know. But um, as far as the other side of the residential, there's some outreach programs that a um, uh, lady named Helen Y does. And she'd be happy if you know of any organizations for condo associations. This was, the most recent one was for, um, that was at Queen Lily Okalani's um, the Women and Children's Center. They did a, a big presentation on how to reduce and take advantage of rebates at your, in your home. Uh, there's a, we work with HCEOC, right, to put in 
no cost or low cost uh, hot water systems for un under um, a certain level of income families that can get put on their house for free. They're trying to put together this on bill financing program to, to expand that to more more renters and stuff to pay for hot water systems on homes. So there's a, a pretty big breath, but as far as getting the word out, that's where I think that's the center so, office on a wobble, you know. So if they got the templates, have they broadcast any PSAs here? You know? No, that's I don't know. I know that they put it in the paper. I just got last week. Everybody was saying, "Oh, I saw you in Sunday's paper." And I guess they put a meet the team kind of. Yep. Here's your contact for your local island. Get get a hold of them. So that was a the only thing I've seen on the island recently that I've, I've heard of. I don't get the paper where I live. I don't look frequently. <laughs> but Steve, the only one I've seen was a uh, teacher one. A uh, written one? The teacher workshop that went on last. Yeah, yeah, that's the only one I've seen. I think, I think though, you brought up a good point. Hawaii Energy, perhaps, would it be nice if they would share with us their marketing calendar on events that, because they do plan quite a, ahead. Yeah. Um, and and it would be easier actually for us as a commission to work with them, mm -hmm. because if they do it versus the county, we got to go through court council. But and and maybe maybe the mayor, but. I think the essence is really getting information out. Right. Um, you know, whether it be, and, and the simple ones that I believe, I think we're thinking about is like uh, when it comes on radio, yeah. TV. Yeah, and in fact, you know, Naleo is a perfect opportunity for them to do a little program mm -hmm. um, with, without much effort. Right. Um, because if they can relate a face to and all these other things, it's just a redundancy, right? That's what the redundancy Well, the radio, I think, is really helpful in, you know, in terms of um, catching people's attention that don't, aren't in these targeted exactly. audiences for this, all this other stuff. And so, you know, it has to be something available to the general public where they can respond to it in a way that's meaningful in that they either call somebody and get more information or um, you're talking about something they can sign up for mm -hmm. or they can go and pick something something if did you know that you know if you turn your water heater down so many degrees you'll save so much you know simple PSA you know that gives them information that they can use but also refers them to call right because last time we heard you weren't getting enough calls right well and I know that it sounds like it's changing with all the commercial activity right but who's going to pick up for the rest of the marginalized the population? residential side I know that they've been working on and this might not be applicable so much for a lot of our rural population but they've been putting a lot into their website um, they've re revamped the website to be way more like navigational friendly and they've also put in some programs to help you understand your energy use you can do these comparisons it's like they had that thing where it came out in the mail and they would notify people of your consumption versus the hundred neighbors in similar housing situation near you. But now there's an actually interactive one where you can go in yourself, compare yourself, set your parameters, and play around with it to help you understand your energy use. I think they even allow you to change your options or something like that. No, Hawaii Energy has okay. been trying to put out this kind of educational stuff on their website, but again, as, as I was saying it might not be so applicable to our rural areas where a lot of people might not be online and stuff. So I think the radios would be radios and PSAs would be definitely well used here on the island. I'm gonna follow up, see if I can put you in touch with our marketing, see if there's a way that maybe like what um, what you were saying, David, try to get that tied closer with the county over here so that that can go out ahead of time. I sent since I started I've sent a few of those educational training offer opportunities that Hawaii Energy puts together that the teachers one that you saw, and there was also that um, building operator certificate course that we were trying to get running. Nobody signed up from our island, so Sorry. I put the word out as much as I could, but we didn't get anybody to buy it. Maui. I know. It's a Maui course, but they would offer it here if we got enough people. How many? I think they need 10, ten to run the course. So we could maybe run it actually here, but um, remotely would have been just as doable, I think. Yeah. Although I, we might not have been able to use the county's uh, uh, what were they called? <laughs> I heard the size on the paper, the, the problems with the, oh. the uh, what was it called? The, the video conferencing. Yeah, video conferencing. So, but a lot of facilities have them. We were trying to get maybe a, um, one of the hotels, use one of their conference rooms, and, and maybe some of their employees, or the camp schools was interested. If we could get uh, that ahead of time, they do want to run it. So, I'll try to send that out again when I hear more information about the next time they're going to run it. 
Yeah, I think if it's 10 people and we have a couple months notice, if you I, get think a team, I, I think I could get If you get like a facility manager and a team under him, it's yeah. supposed to be much more effective that way because then you have a team that understands the, the controls and, and the different energy saving opportunities that work towards together. Great. Actually, you know, Will, um, do you folks have a um, list of all the property management companies in the state? Um, I don't. But that is really the one knows are the ones. Yeah. Because they're concentrated. I mean, so there'll be property right? managers. Well, it's associations. Associations, yeah. It's property managers. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're the generally, you know, the trade groups that keep in touch with those things. Yeah, they, they, they have, have the it's most significant impact. <coughs> the other one that, although is a little bit different, is with JR folks. Um, there's the private water industry is actually larger than the public water industry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they have significant uh, need of continuing to need. We, we have some water programs coming up. We had an energy efficiency and water systems thing about a month and a half ago or two months ago. But we also have, that's what I was going to follow up with you later. There's something coming up, and I don't know if it's a training or if it's an actually like a I'll look into it. I'll send you the information. So, so I can try to focus. What Steve does, yeah, but if you can get the training and, and um, Marketing calendars. I mean, that's a good start to understand what might be available on our island. And any PSAs they've already developed. <coughs> if they have samples, <laughs> templates, or whatever that they put together. You guys have someone that I, I could maybe interact more directly with with that. If I if I could put someone directly, that you, you, yeah. you guys okay? Yeah. Do, do you work at all with the realtors? No, I mean I've been working with whoever I can. That's well, no, the reason the reason I bring that up is you know one of the hard things. I've worked with a lot of different certifications over the years. And part of it, there's so many out there for different things that everybody's like, I don't want to, you know, not of course. But energy being what it is today, and the realtors deal a lot with, especially the larger properties and the property management. Right. And if that's something that they can add on that, you know, we're certified to, you know. Oh, yeah. And because that is something that will put different property management groups in. in that's, what, that's what the BOC training was for, the building right. operator certificate. It's, it's another one of those certificates, but it is a well-known one for energy. And but, as building use. but the realtors, you have to have that license in order right. to do it. That's why if you contact the different firms that do it. That's what I'll, I'll look into doing yeah. that for the next time. That was, again, it was a Maui course. Yes. Hawaii Energy is contracted with them to try to help get it running. So I, I kind of put the word out. And when I worked at the college, that was my job before here at Community College was to put courses together. So I thought, OK, I'm helping get the word out how much of the actual filling the seats and then registering people to have to do it. We, we didn't have a location either. so that was. Uh, looks like I <laughs> can we have a problem? So, Colleen Board of Realtors, he should contact Colleen Board of Realtors. Yes, sir. So, so, cycling back our conversation to, uh, you know, a little more focus on uh, a residential consumer, mm -hmm. I think that's the area that um, we really need some support yeah. there. And, uh, you know, it needs to be consistent over time so people get introduced to it and they'll hopefully take an interest because. Uh, uh, they're paying more than their fair share um, into the fund for Hawaii Energy, right. and it's reflected in their electric bill. Mm -hmm. And they should have some benefit, uh, and uh, from our experience, you and know, I think education is the tool that we should be using. Besides having, you know, point of sale, right? You know, you could be in Costco every day, and you know. You just gotta see the emblem. You're not gonna really. It's not gonna make any sense to you anyway. Right. Because I've, I've been trying to follow up on some. So, for example, one of those HVAC contractors they gave me a list of about 70 units they put in. Only about 30 of them or 20 of them were actually commercial units. All the rest are residential. The, the HVAC contractor wanted to tell their their clients about the rebates, but gave them all commercial applications when they when they said, "Here's the paperwork to file for your rebate." So the initial few who did it got rejected because they're filing a residential rebate with a commercial application. So the HVAC contractor just said, oh, this rebate program is bogus. <laughs> Threw their hands up. So I'm, I'm trying to go from not just the point of sale, but from the contractor side. Anybody who might be working at that level with outside of the box stores, right, that might be able to educate them. Again, I'm kind of a one man. We're, we have to run all the different programs for Hawaii Energy on the island, right? So I'm trying to tie it all together as best I can. So if I'm chasing a rebate, Kind of chase it for the residential side as much as I can as well, and, and get them involved. Because if if one resident gets a rebate after the fact, they're going to be like, 
oh, wait a minute, and they're going to tell their friends about it, and then all of a sudden I've been getting calls from residential clients going, hey, how do I how do I go about this, and if I do get a new HVAC unit, how do I collect the rebate? So I'm so going to hit from yeah. as many angles as I can. <laughs> so it seems like if you can target the residential, and even just to educate them about what the program is and the fact that they're paying these fees, it sounds like... Well, they have to have somebody they can contact, right? right. And, I, and I do know that if we do some PSAs about educational opportunities or something like that, um, Helen Y would be really happy to come and do other workshops on the island. She's done them. They, they're, they're pretty good for, for the residential level. Uh, the workshops are only going to get a certain sector right. of that market. We're trying to actually tap into the marginalized sector that right. isn't getting any attention at right. all right now. And in education, you know, in, in whatever form it takes, is about one of the methods for doing that. I, I want to explore briefly before we end this topic the possibility of county's involvement in this as well. And I think there's some advantages of the county doing some PSAs in addition to maybe Hawaii Energy doing that, in that the county is perceived as a, um, you know, a, it doesn't have any kind of self-interest involved. It's, um, it's an organization that, uh, that, you know, will be perceived as being neutral in the message may be received better mm -hmm. than coming from somebody like Hawaii Energy where the people think it's a commercial enterprise or they may not know who it is and they're thinking it's more of a marketing message than an educational message. And so to emphasize that educational message, I think having the PSAs come from the county, or maybe even the county employees, different ones go and read these messages on the radio, you know, just to make it personal and to get people in the community who people recognize out there. Delivering messages people can relate to, very simple, and with a point of contact where they can follow up. Yeah. That's, that's what I see is missing, right? Provide now. An, just an energy saving example and then say, oh, and by the way. That's one way to do it. Yeah, you could like. Simple little things they can do just to get a hook in there, get people's interest, get them to engage and call back. Um, if there are programs, you know, get yeah. them aware of the programs. Whatever it is, I think it would be good for the county as well in bringing positive PR to the county. You know, it's a positive message all around. You yeah. know, things that we believe yeah. in that. We support for our community. It seems like it'd be a good if there's a way to maybe, work together. Yeah, to tie in some of those. If we could even work in the future to plan out some of these sort of outreach events where you where you have a, a group of people and you know you're giving them this kind of a little bit more detailed. That's what like Helen Wise presentations were. So break things down for the the homeowner. Like you turn off your phantom loads or you know and do you clean the grate on your refrigerator once a year or something like that. Uh, it actually has a big effect. Well, no, I mean, most people don't know there's a grating on there. Yeah, they didn't. I was in there and, and they were like, wow. I said, I did it in my house and my, my power consumption on my refrigerator went down by a quarter. Like, yeah. A quarter of it. Well, Except for free. free. I'm sorry. No, please go ahead. For free now, the PSAs don't cost anything. Right. You're paying, Helen, to do this. You're only reaching right. a small sector of the population. Whereas the radio is going right. to reach a whole lot more people and it doesn't cost anything. If you get or something like that going and then have some events planned additionally, where you can invite them in, or yeah, you hear these if you're interested in hearing more. You know, you get a little yeah. Blur. Anyway, so what's what's within the scope of the commission? Are you allowed to make PSAs? I and mean, I, I don't know if we're yeah. You could come up to or formulate PSAs, like Steve was saying. Okay. Um, just have it ready to go in the and form that you would want it to be. Recommend the mayor should you know run these on behalf of the county. Yes, okay. through R and D. Okay. I like that idea. It's kind of I think that's great. Getting the ball rolling. One thing, just knowing, then, this is when you step away from the managed home. We're talking to individual homeowners. Mm -hmm. They pay into all this stuff. But one of the, mm -hmm. the other things is the people that actually pay attention to it, um, they tend to be the tinkerers. And the problem is, is um, let's just say a lot of their electrical work is not to code. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And the reason, but the thing is, they've also, I know a fair number of them have also had negative impacts when people come in and inspect it or check something. To the extent where they literally had a, rip, a, a meter ripped out and walked away. And they're sitting there in the dark. Um, so a lot of them are pretty gun shy. Right. And that's, well, I mean, it's the, if you've ever seen like some of the water heaters and stuff, that's why when you mention the water heater thermostat, I mean, I've seen some, you know, the whole raw plumbing systems that they, you know, they put in. It's like, wow. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have a little bit of a challenge in that market because, 
they want to learn, but they don't want to get inspected or checked. Right, they'll do it on their own. Yeah, especially at, at the homeowner level. The homeowner level, the major savings are either going to be behavior modification, which is something that everybody can learn about. But then, too, at the residential level, you're just looking at majorly, you've got an electric hot water here, there's 30 year energy use. You know, you don't have a timer, get a timer on it, but that's what you're getting at. And then if you can replace it with an instant, replace it with an instant. If you can afford solar, go for solar, you know. The, the, the big action items on a, on a residential scale aren't too broad, you know. They're not, right. they're not running a bunch of different types of equipment. So in general, the educational outreach could be pretty straightforward. And if, you, if, if we find people doing things that are not to code, maybe there would be a, a further um, on proper installation or some other kind of way we could outreach to, to those kind of crowd, like avoid a hassle later. <laughs> Because that would be a very important because I mean, you know, after the earthquake, classic example. How many people do you know that do not have their water heater strapped down? Okay, most of them. Because you change them at some point and nobody puts the strapping back in. So, right. Anyway. Would it be possible to get, I mean, assuming we're moving in this direction to formulate some of these PSAs and we're gathering information about the marketing messages and all that, how can we? Narrow or zero in on the um, <clears throat> the key messages, low cost things that can be done by the typical residential consumer on the island. What what are like? Could you give us maybe like a half a dozen of the top things that yeah, you say we would want to focus different messages on, mm -hmm. and we can build messages around those and make sure. it interesting and fun yeah. and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is stuff that everyone can do, not buying solar water heaters or whatever. Right. It's the stuff, the simple things, you know. And it's the phantom loads, um, the yeah. power strips that you can turn off. Insulating water heater, turning okay. the temperature okay. timers. Okay. I mean, all yeah. this stuff yeah. is simple, low but cost, right? Low, right? low, low flush. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just uh, getting low, low flow water. water picture try and target that sector sure. that's yeah. not really getting targeted at this point. I'm sure there's a, a residential thing on low flow water you can get them either free or very very reduced like shower heads and faucets that you can change up pretty easily if you could get us a list of like a half a dozen of those key I will. focus items then we can work with that i think especially focus maybe on behavioral changes and stuff like that whatever you know, the top recommendations sure, to help sure. residential customers save without huge expenditures Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's maybe something that the education outreach can often. I just kind of draft up some. Yeah, shake PSAs around those. those yeah. Things. Sure. I'm gonna find yeah, it shouldn't be. It's not. It's not hard. PSAs yeah. are quick. They're simple. You know, a few lines. Yeah. That's it. Great. Sure. I know that they already have some too. They, they have them on the website. Little, little mm -hmm. nerves they have here. Did you know that your yeah. average hot water costs this much? You got to keep hammering people with Changes. it, though, or it doesn't sink right. in. If they hear it one time, they forget about it. I'm gonna yeah. I, I'm gonna pull some of the info from from Helen White because she has great ones. And it, if she you know talks in pigeon all in her client, she's saying, you know, your kid takes a shower. How long you can take a shower? Thirty minutes. How many people take? Like, oh, my kid takes them thirty minutes. You know, she, then she breaks it down. She goes, yeah. Here's how much your shower costs per convenience. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you have them take a 15 minute shower, you're going to save so many hundreds of dollars a year. So we can get all that data and crunch it into a. We'll do like a, a Bayfront Motors. Uh, yeah. Yes. Have you guys heard their, have you heard their, their ads? No, I don't think so. The soap opera, Bayfront Motors. Oh, you know, energy efficiency one. Really entertaining. You know, Bayfront Motors commercial. All right, any other, any other discussion on that topic? Thank you. Thanks, Grace. Great. That's good. That'll be a good to set the I'll follow up with that and, and put you guys in touch with, with your Excellent. people. Okay, thanks. Okay, we'll move to subcommittee reports. Starting with the transportation. I think the report I had a question on the policy started using biodiesel. Have we started yet? You know, the award Don and Jenna would know before I would. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wondering. I, I heard it's supposed to be April 1st. April. Yeah. Which is coming up around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
See? <laughs> Thanks for all your hard work. Oh. So nothing else to report? Nothing exciting. <laughs> no, no hydrogen stuff. No, no hydrogen. You had that, um, that, you had that CDL workshop? That yeah, that's scheduled for Wednesday. Oh, okay. All right. Good policy. I, I mean, there's not much going on on the policy side. I mean, I read what you wrote up. This year's Reds has not too many energy-related issues, actually. The big one, of course, is, you know, the purchase of home electric. Yeah. Everybody's watching that. I think the one that uh, they're pushing through, I don't know if you've made crossover, was the community solar in um, to Especially addressing uh, apartment owners and condo don't have the rooftop space. Right. And, and that got tied into, I think, EV hookups too, uh, if I recall correctly. But that's really the only one that I've seen. And again, I don't know. I guess there's an issue with uh, anyone who has a plug-in getting the necessary uh, consent from the association on a timely basis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's an issue here, but apparently it is in the long run. <coughs> I think they got to give them like 60 days and they can answer or something. But I didn't see, but the community one, though, Steve, did you, did you see the bill? I, didn't I haven't looked at that particular one. I know I've been following this um, for several years now. They've yeah. been trying to get something through. Um, and the reason is, um, is the yeah. infrastructure will be built somewhere else. Right. And um, so that's kind of mm -hmm. in alignment with your, you know, so I, I, yeah. the language is, is being and it's consummated or it's, it gets further. That might be a good model to look at as well. Yeah, we made that recommendation to the mayor, actually, uh, a couple of years ago, and he took interest. I mean, he, he said, hmm, that sounds like an interesting idea, but nothing obviously um, happened yet. Now, um, in this particular program, um, <clears throat> I'm assuming the, uh, well, the, the, the customers are, are going to, buy into a large facility, is that in the form of credits or do they That's why I, you know, I, you don't, that's why you could, if you, yeah. if you look at the bill, because let me explain why that interested me and it just dawned on me when I was trying to, is that I think it has tremendous capacity to expand the GEMS program in a rural uh, area that is economically depressed, Kau, whatever, you, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, you know, to me, I think now with GEMS is actually a, a mechanism for funding that was not, this is not, I know it's not specifically for something like that, but I think it has strong opportunity for application. And that, if you wouldn't mind, see, you guys hear a little bit more on it, but again, I don't know if it meant, so not, even if it didn't meet crossover, if the language in the bill has value, then we can work with policy to, to move that, because I think that has strong capacity. Mm -hmm. I'll try to find it, that, 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 what you call It's something that would have to go through the PUC, though. So, you know, it's a long-term process. It's not just a simple mayoral recommendation or something. Yeah, is that community-based RE program? Does that sound familiar? I am not 100% sure. All right, that's a house bill. Well, when I got it, which was 314, it was a Senate bill, a 1050. So, so I think it originated in the house, huh? I think so. so. Maybe, maybe oh, the crossover. Yeah. Well, if you got it, you can forward to, 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 to even again. I, I'm more interested in the language. So the bills don't, we can, we can maybe look at it as an opportunity. And then, of course, tie it into GEMS <coughs> mm -hmm. to access that pot of funds for the, for the building of the the big, the big, One of the big issues in this area was the, the issue of wheeling. Um, and, yeah. you know, whenever you bring up wheeling, there's always, you know, everyone throws their hands up and you don't get anywhere with it because the parties have vested interests, obviously. Um, but wheeling, you can get away from the concept of wheeling if you're not talking about exchanging energy, but rather just credits. And credits are different than actual shipping energy through the lines. And there's a way to do that. This is what they did in California and some places where they're working on this. And, this program's taking off now in California, that community solar. Community solar. They started in, um, 
Well, with PVUSA, um, started selling their power to the city um, that they're generating is privately owned. And they did that in the same way, and they, that was a concept um, that they demonstrated. So, if you could see, I'm thinking you know, the concept could be, especially in the community, if you, you know, we take it one more step further. County signed a PPA with the community solar group and actually yield so third part. But I mean, I, what are you, and, and, and because I've been looking at it from some, another perspective, but now that we got gems, I actually think that the state has opened up the opportunity for these kind of projects. Again, it's outside of the realm of it, but the reality of it, I think, now has huge capacity. I don't know if it's worth chiming in, especially given the size of our, our grid compared to all the other islands. Is one of the things I saw at a conference a couple of years ago, I think it was coming out of uh, New Jersey, there's a lot of, lot, actually New Jersey has a lot of solar penetration on their grid. And one of the things they were talking about, like community solar, a larger distributed facility could provide, aside from power, is grid stability by, by looking at the power factor correction as a PV. So you have to have storage on site. But because we have long grids in real rural areas, if, if you have a big farm somewhere, you might be able to do power factor correction at the end. And that's a big service, actually, that they could charge for and recoup some of the... My understanding is the, the Kapoho that was one of the reasons why, and the one they were looking at, Hawaii should be, if I recall correctly, goes along those lines. But um, you know, but those are stri strictly PBAs. Yeah. So they don't sell something back as a, a service aside from the power. But I think there's a public benefit component in what you said, Steve. There's yeah. a high probability. Well, and if the island um, ends up with a publicly owned utility, then it's quite more likely that something like that could evolve. Because obviously, with the price of electricity, if people can <laughs> sign up and get their energy from solar at a lower cost than they're buying from the grid, everyone's going to sign up, and that's just not going to work for the utility, right. to keep the utility. And I think there's great opportunity right now with current setup on the resiliency factor. Yeah. And so that being said, yeah. you know, No, I think it's a great program. Yeah. I think it's good for the residents. And for the utility too, is design right? That's a, a challenging aspect of it. From experience, the, the only uh, words of caution I would have is uh, uh, decision makers and, on the state and county level. Uh, they would want to take the benefit first, mm -hmm. is, is my understanding. So if, if the state takes a piece of the pie and the county takes a piece of the pie, there's less for the ultimate consumers who are uh, seeking that benefit. So we need to be careful as we move forward to make sure that uh, it's an equitable plan that uh, okay. ultimately okay. The, the consumers at the end are the okay. beneficiaries of the effort. Right. Maybe something uh, might be interested in. There's a couple of uh, uh, the uh, 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 what you call uh, USDA uh, rural development is holding a uh, workshop April first. Uh, this is actually specifically in regards to ag uh, renewable energy loan uh, and grant opportunities. And so. Uh, if anyone's not familiar, it's April 1st, 9 a.m. to 11, just need to get in touch with Tim O'Connell's office. Um, but in generally speaking, I mean, one of the sad parts about these programs is you really need partners to, to help you too because it's, 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 it's a tough deal on the grant, on the, on the fulfillment of the grant. But the sad reality is almost every farm bill that's passed, they have not used the money. <laughs> And so it's, but it, I think you got to go with the concept like a coalition, two or three partners go in and try to see how they can you know, leverage it. Yeah, it's like 12 grants to try to fill out. Yeah, it, it <laughs> is. It's RDP grants? grants. RDP. Yeah, but more and more though, what I've noticed, John, is the last couple I saw is they're allowing in kind now. Mm -hmm. as, as a for all hard money. I think they're realizing that that's not, mm -hmm. the capacity isn't there. But anyway, that's just an opportunity on that. Well, we didn't meet this last month. Um, 
we are kind of in a holding pattern until we get reformulated with our new membership, and um, I, you know that's kind of what we're intending for the next subject area today. So we'll uh, hopefully be able to regroup. We'll have different members or new members and a clearer, clearer, clarified mission or whatever. So along those lines, uh, maybe just do a little uh, short briefing on uh, my attendance at the business solutions workshop that was presented by the Small Business Administration in conjunction with uh, HELPO's uh, Small Business Outreach Program. Uh, and this is their first se session that they had, and they expect to go on and wide, working with HELPO and the Small Business Administration, uh, reaching maybe 20, 25 uh, uh, people in a classroom setting. Um, it went from 8.30 to 10 o'clock, and it was held at the uh, Boy Community College. And it started out talking about their small business center at, at, at Calco, in which individuals could log into the system that uh, Hawaiian Electric has. And uh, it, it gives more detailed, specific information on uh, a variety of different uh, technologies. Uh, and then they covered energy efficient technologies and um, the focus on uh, lighting. And again, the focus on lighting is, is, is really you know, the first step towards en energy efficiency because uh, not like some of the other things, it's, it's visual. Um, you know, other things that occur with your air conditioning, uh, heating, cooling, uh, are really passive, or even solar water heating, mm -hmm. or, or photovoltaics. They're passive, so people don't see the direct benefit. And uh, it was a pretty good workshop, considering that um, you know it, it was only an hour and a half. And the strides that have been made in uh, LEDs has been re really remarkable in the past, you know, three three years or so. And I guess more is expected in the future. So. Uh, focus in that area is, is really helpful. They'll be able to replace these fluorescent TAs very quickly in mass yeah. with LEDs. And at, at the cost savings, that will make it beneficial less than yeah. two year payback. So uh, it's coming. It's coming. <coughs> so those that people have made investments in, in relamping will still be able to still be able to convert yeah. and reap substantial savings. Uh, the other thing they covered uh, briefly was uh, rates and billing. And uh, that's really important because uh, understanding the electric rates is, is, is really primary. Uh, they're components of the bill that need to be understood. And uh, I think we're all a, a little naive as to the details of your billing, including the additional charges for uh, demand. demand. Uh, and the real question that's hard to answer is people are making investments in, in portable takes. Uh, they're being sold on average average costs rather than the demand component. Mm -hmm. And the demand component really needs to be explained to all, all customers. And you know, it's a cost of service demand charge really. That isn't based on your annual high demand and your current consumption. So, there needs to be more education in that area. But um, <coughs> I wish that, that they tagged um, sustainability into their presentation. <coughs> so hopefully in the future, you know, they could uh, include you know, other sustainable efforts that can be made in conjunction with energy efficiency, energy education, and energy saving. Uh, again, if you, you would like to uh, Look at the system. It's a small business center. You can log into Point um, Lecture, and uh, they did a real credible job trying to cover things in an hour and a half. So uh, you know, credit to home, to Helpo for uh, being able to uh, come up with a program that covers a wide range of subjects in a short period of time, and creating uh, interest from the participants as well. Yeah. Dave attended as um, his family business. Yeah, I, I thought it would be 
you know, as much as we think we understand, uh, this allowed uh, for a more uh, comprehensive toolbox. Uh, their online program gives uh, basic information, but enough to, you know, have you want to get more further, more detailed information. But they've got some calculators and, and some other things, and they've also got an ask to, and it's 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 uh, manned by a third party, but all engineers. Um, and uh, he gets he gets CC to help go to it. Yeah. Yeah. So they're aware, and generally they respond within 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So it is at least a, a tool for you know the private sector to utilize. So, so especially facility people, I think that, or, or even contractors for that matter. Uh, that that's really effective. Uh, one of the things uh, which Tommy indicated that um, uh, would be nice is the sustainability piece. Um, <coughs> And also, they have this program called Smart Kids. That's kind of an interactive tool, uh, which which is something I feel really important because one of the challenges is that you know the program you're talking about, like Hawaii Community Economic Opportunity Council, they run the Lehi program. But although there's a component for outreach, and I was even telling Tommy, it, it's more cursory in nature. It's like, okay, do you understand? Blah blah blah. But, not really practical applications. In other words, you know, uh, come, let me show you how this, but you look at how the bill went down by this much, babe. you know, I mean, people are gonna believe what they see versus what you tell them a lot of times. And so that's why the consulting, you know, that one-on-one -on -one is, we've been saying is so critical. You put them in a room like this, you give them a piece of paper and tell them, okay, you know, phantom loads, you know, eh, what is that? Oh, oh your TV, oh. But, you know, the disproportionate amount of what the uh, private consumer pays, especially in a rural area, is higher. It's, it's much higher than it is elsewhere because the disposable income gets eaten up. Um, but John, you brought up, but the key to it is trying to have a community-based program of some sort. So I don't know. Uh, one other thing we'll try to do is work with Helco and HCLC because I'm with them on the kids program because kids have a strong opportunity to motivate the adults. So we'll see and, and see, if, especially like if I mean, I see some of these people, I don't know how they afford to keep the lights on. I mean, it's amazing, I mean, what they do with one dollar bill, but, but the challenge too, what we noticed, is they increase their consumption of electricity when they have assistance. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so in any way, uh, you know, it's no fault. I mean, there, there's a lot to do, that's, that's for sure. But it was a good start. Do you guys provide feedback to them on their on their mm -hmm. presentation on maybe areas like what you're saying as far as sustainability of the with the PV and the billing? I noticed because I spoke to one person after who has a J account, and they don't realize that when they go PV, it doesn't mean that they're becoming more efficient. And if they put a big PV system on their facility and they haven't looked at the timing of their motor loads or anything like that, their demand remains the same if they're running a 24-hour facility because yes. at night. They're pulling directly off the grid, so if they haven't staged their motors to come on at different times and they're peaking too high, like uh, that was an area I thought they could address. You know, PV is great, but you might want to look at your efficiency before you even size your system. <laughs> well, they, they're they're trading on, uh, you know. I thought it was a good presentation. I'm not knocking it at all, but that was a feedback I would provide. They're, they're trading trading in an area in which um, it it may be counterproductive at this time because it, you know that. The perception is Helco doesn't want any more uh, yeah. PV, PV, period. You know. So they, they need to be sensitive to that. But uh, as part of this program, they should be reaching out to each customer that installs photovoltaic systems, how your bill is calculated, right. and what what they can do to minimize the demand. Because the demand is the, the most important factor. Right. The capacity that the utility has to have to serve its customers at any particular time. Well, Tommy, sadly, on an NEM, it does have it, but it, it's so technical in nature, it's tough to understand. Yeah. You know, because especially when the, remember the first NEM bills came out? Holy moly. So, but, you know, but, but Helco did this, this, and then the, the new bill was more friendly, and how that is calculated. But still, I think this is something I indicated to Will, maybe we need to ask installers that they should, like, how life insurance companies have to do a disclosure that they, they at least allow the consumer to understand these are the things you need you need to look into or 
have the best talk to your HVAC engineers, suggest you call your customer service. I mean, you know, it generally has to be initiated by the consumer, which is okay, but it allows them the opportunity to make a better decision. I felt for the guy at hospice. Yeah. He wasn't, I mean, he, you're right, Tommy. I mean, it's, it's efficiency is not the same as reducing your consumption and reducing your bill. That, that's, that's something else. What, and because um, and then in moving from a G to a J, right, that's significant too. Well, if you're a J account, yeah, you're gonna get the demand to right. go over. Right. So I mean, but how many of these facility managers or business owners, or even especially the consumer, I mean, it's not that's not as impactful. But for these small businesses, I mean, it, it, it's problematic. I seen it in one store where we oh. did a major before I started working for White Energy. Did a major energy retrofit to the store. Their bill didn't go down. And because may, may, basically their, their most largest equipment, we didn't do anything to, but it all came on at the same time, which meant they were just going to experience that ratchet every year, you know, and they didn't know. They're like, well, you didn't do anything. And I showed them, look, your consumption went down, but you guys are getting hit with the bill because you're going over, you're peaking too high, right, when you're, when you're not using or when, you're, when all your equipment starts up. So I just wanted to... Thank you. Yep. Because <laughs> I know some people are going to yep. no, no, no. Thank you. Um, so if you want to move to number 10, just for a few minutes, you can talk about um, kind of our subcommittees and maybe whether we want to make any new subcommittees or we want to rework who's on them. Um, I don't know what you guys think is Cheers. <laughs> I was wondering if you guys needed help in policy, because if anybody here would want to join my group since we're good friends, I was kind of charging um, that rope. Steve. Yeah. I kind of got that hand. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was a force. Well, real quick, in regards to policy, the emphasis really was on uh, water and energy. Next to fuel, water, well, fuel and water are synonymous. Yeah. I mean, you can't have one without the other. Um, but it's probably the, the component that uh, impacts actual uh, social economic uh, opportunities, not only from the private sector, uh, which actually is a huge opportunity, uh, but also from the uh, commercial and business sector as well. So. You know, and, and for the Big Island, it's never been an issue of water. It's been the uh, infrastructure of the distribution costs, and of course, you know, getting the pipes in the ground and like those kind of things. But regionally, we have no water. I mean, some of the driest areas have unbelievable water tables that can be tapped. But again, so so that was the emphasis that we're, we're and why we had asked GR to come on board because it has a it has a significant opportunity to improve lifestyle for our island. Um, yeah. So, uh, but that that was that was uh, the emphasis of policy. And there's some other areas, the community, and you know, solar is one um, that uh, well, anything with alternate opportunities in energy that has benefit. I mean, definitely is an impact to that. So that's what we're working on with. Policy typically, and when Steve passed, kind of lapsed a little bit in that regard. I'd be willing to step on over because, I mean, obviously, I have a lot of that. But it's not just about lifting the water, also using the water as an energy storage device. Because the truth is, one of the biggest problems with solar is you got, you know, between a five and seven hour window. Right. The other thing that's interesting, just from a, a policy standpoint, Certain areas, Kukiu mainly in particular, they're actually abandoning their most efficient systems because of the overall cost. Um, and what's happening is individual homeowners are putting in their own small systems, which are going to load the wells, the fields pretty heavily. And their own well? Their own well. Mm -hmm. own yeah. well. They're, because these, some of these people are spending 15000 a month on water. Wow. And so they're putting in brackish wells with ROs, and the power levels are going through the roof. And the real question you have to ask is why is water for irrigation costing them so much? But that makes sense to do on a household level. Yeah. Oh, you have no idea. Yeah, I'm trying to grasp that. How's, yeah. How's that, that? I guess multiple wells doesn't affect the, the, the head or the aquifer there. Right? 
well, brackish wells by their you know, brackish areas by their nature, of course, are sea level. You know, with the varying salinity levels, mixing zones underneath. Um, the more interesting is going to come down to what they do with the concentrate. Right. And that's the question. Especially when you have a bunch of people, like several hundred in the small yeah, area. Yeah, it's it, there's there there's some fun coming. Excuse me. As well as regulation. Actually, the regulators are not touching it. Well, they're going to they're going to be coming because it, they're looking at uh, domestic wells in Puno. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you see, part of what's happened there, there there's two elements to this. One of the things about the people that are that I know of, well, <coughs> most of them, they're in compliance. They're following the rules. Now, what you're talking about is a lot of the small wells that were put in, nobody does their monthly reports, nobody does their chloride levels, none of it just pump the water and nobody pays attention. That's one that they're coming in back in on because they have so much that they, nobody's doing anything. Um, but there's also, you know, Puna, the flip side too, is there's a pile, and I mean a pile of illegal wells. Oh, in Perry's Park. <laughs> uh, well, no, no, I mean, people just, over. there's all kinds of people come in, they'll drill you a well, you pay them cash to drill the well, uh, and you put your pump down there and nobody talks to them again. And so it's, it's one of those... You know, food is a pincushion in a lot of ways. Sorry, Dad. Um, I have a suggestion since there's a number of people that need to leave. Um, my thought would be if you could just identify who is already the existing members in the committees and then ask if there's anybody else. And then maybe the mission, because that's going to take a little longer. Yeah. My thought would be the mission we could um, revisit. Yeah. And you can work with whatever you're already working on. Okay. For it. That's just my thoughts because I know there's a lot of people that are leaving and we want to yeah. make sure we have quorum to get yeah, that. Yeah, great. Okay. So who's, so currently the policy? policy this is Dave and Mike. Dave and Mike. Yeah, okay. Okay. Sounds like John will step okay. into that. Um, outreach is Steve and Tom. Um, and Marvin had left, so we had another member <coughs> previously. Transportation, are you the only one? Yeah. Okay. No, no, you, you don't need anybody. What about Kanani? Kanani is ex officio, but she's not necessarily um, really assigned. She's yeah. kind of coming. She's not the water person, but she has just been temporarily assigned to come when she can. Yeah. But I do know that also, if I'm not mistaken, if I share, we do not need to have, they all do not need to be commissioners. Oh, okay. Yeah, because Julie was in transportation, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, you also could include maybe, you know, in, in your educational piece if you thought. I mean, just, just thinking out loud. Um, right now, transportation is Kelvin. Education is Burns and Goya. Policy is uh, Deleuze, Mike, and John. Yeah. And I can step on to maybe I don't know what would be most effective. <coughs> Transportation or just have to recuse if there's anybody. Sounds like that's already. If I could suggest, Chair, uh, this goes to the intent of this uh, initiative is now that we just, I mean, people have identified for a particular area, we can come back to look at our mandate and see if it's pur still purposeful I mean, I, and have that discussion. Yeah. At least we've got people to interact. Mm -hmm. It's based on dots. I think that's a good idea. Okay. So I can step on to the transportation sure. yeah. for now. And so, then, um, so our next next Kuliana before our next meeting is to so look at meet our committees and see yeah. you know what the purpose okay. of the event is. Okay. Yeah. Kind of three suggestions for any questions about this. Grayson, would you like to join a committee or oh, I'm not the sure. Uh, I think it sounds like we don't they want to be no. anybody can be a committee yeah. member. The chair yeah. has to be a member of the uh, commission. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd be more than happy to if any you guys feel I'd be um, needed on yeah, one. I know outreach education that can help. Well, we, I mean, we call to be with them anyway. I don't know that you, you know, you're generally available. Yeah. We haven't had an issue as okay. far as the ex officio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so being there as ex officio. I think we're fine. Yeah, okay. Okay. You're, you're always welcome. Okay. Because yeah, the other side too is you don't want to be tied into quorum. Right. If you're already um, involved if, anyway. If, if on any of the committees, if there's any way that, you know, I can provide any Hawaii energy support, I'm available. So I'm, I'll call me for whatever. And, and we consider you a keeper because you're representing 
not only in Hawaiian energy, but East Hawaii too. Yeah. Thank you. From here. From and went after college to try to come back and do something here. And by the way, Grayson, that, that uh, worksheet you did or gave us at the uh, uh, SBA program, uh -huh. that'd be something, uh, if you could forward to Will, that'd be good on their websites. Because sure. you, it's a down and dirty in regards to the availability and what types of programs would qualify for rebates. Yeah. In fact, I'll give so you a copy here just so you, Does anybody want any of those, actually? Yeah, yeah. 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 actually wasn't, because you go on the website, it's not that easy. Yeah, these are the awesome. summaries. These make more sense to me. Non lighting and lighting summaries. Yeah, yeah. And, and you got it done with lighting and non lighting, which is the other thing. That was well done, though, Chris. Really? I went on the wing there. Oh, sure. You see, and there. that's what I think Steve's asking. Those collateral materials uh, availability would be nice to know. That's what we want to know. Okay, so we'll do the, well, the committees can look at the missions meanwhile, and then we'll have a further discussion about that. Is this going to be a part of the, the next handout? Yeah. It's going to be a part of, no, this handout. Oh, this handout. Um, Would it be considered a part of his, um, yeah. 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 right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay since we've got a bunch of people leaving. Maybe we can move to the last item. Are on what number? Oh, 11. Okay. Oh, I gave you one. I got one. Thanks. Okay. May I please have a set so I can include it into our minutes? Okay. Move to your. No. Sorry. It is now 11 19. Move to adjourn. Sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, first and then no. second. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.